Hello everyone, this is Oshani from Chinta.com. Today we will be discussing this problem from ISI VSTAT MEMATH entrance. At the end of this video, I will give you a challenge as well. If you are able to solve the challenge, put it in the comment section. The best commenter will be invited to present in this particular channel to all the 60,000 plus members and we will also give a free access to the ISI CMI entrance self-paced program. You can check the link of the description for that in the description section. So what does this problem say? It says that if n is greater than or equal to 2, n is a natural number and suppose it's greater than or equal to 2, then n factorial whole square is greater than n to the power n. Okay? n factorial whole square is greater than or equal to n to the power n. How can we show this? Turns out that this problem is intricately related with the Euler number E, which is approximately 2.71. So if you were attending Chinta's Math Olympiad program or ISI CMI entrance program, you already have seen Euler number and you have seen how it is related to algebraic inequalities like the AMGM inequality. It's one of the great discoveries of mathematics. Maybe in some other video I'll talk about it. But let's do this particular problem first. So what we will use is mathematical induction. So first, let's check for n equals to 3, whether this particular inequality is true for n equals to 3. So what is the left hand side? It's 3 factorial whole square. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So 6 square, which is 36. And the right hand side is 3 to the power 3 which is 27 so clearly this is true 36 is greater than 27 so yes the formula the inequality is true this particular inequality is true for n equal to 3 you can check for n equal to 2 the equality will hold actually okay so that's the base case of the induction this is the base case. Now, what is the inductive assumption? The inductive assumption is the, the formula is true for n. Assume the inequality, the inequality is true for n equals to some k some k up to some k it's true well that means that k factorial whole square is greater than k to the power k that's the assumption and we have checked up to k equal to 3 2 and 3 have checked 2 i have asked you to check 3 i checked okay now we give the proof so with this assumption show that the statement is true for n equals to k plus 1 which means we want to show we want to show using this we want to show that k plus 1 factorial whole square is greater than k plus 1 to the power k plus 1 okay so how do we go from here to here how do we go from here to here Okay, let's see. So, let's start with what we have. Start with what we have. So, we have k factorial whole square is greater than k to the power k. That is the inductive assumption. Now, we will multiply. We will multiply k 
plus k k plus one whole square to both side. Multiply k plus one whole square to both side. Why do we do this? Because we want to make k plus one factorial whole square on the left hand side of the inequality. So what do we have? We have k plus one whole square times k factorial whole square. So that is k plus one factorial whole square. That's greater than k raised to k times k plus one whole square. So what we really need to show now is that this thing k raised to k is greater than k plus 1 raised to k minus 1. Okay, k plus 1 raised to k minus 1. Why? What would happen if we are able to show that? Well, then you can say that this is greater than k plus 1 raised to k minus 1 times k plus 1 whole square, which is k plus 1 raised to the power k plus 1. Exactly what I wanted. So if I can show k to the power k is greater than k plus 1 raised to k minus 1, then I can replace it and I'll get k plus 1 raised to k plus 1 exactly what I wanted. So this is the real inequality that we have to establish. So let me write that down. I want to show that k to the power k is greater than k plus 1 raised to the power k plus 1. That's all I want to show. Okay, how do I show that? All right. So... What I'll do is, I will divide both sides by k to the power k minus 1. Okay, I can do that. I can divide by a same positive number that I can do. So, I have k greater than 1 plus 1 by k raised to the power k minus 1. 1 by 1, 1 plus 1 by k to the power k minus 1, right? That's what I have. Let's multiply by 1 by 1 plus k on both sides. So I will have k plus 1 is greater than 1 plus 1 by k to the power k. Okay, so why is this true? So is this true? Now here comes the real fun. Actually, so we, remember we are working with n greater than or equal to 2. So k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Turns out that this thing is not only smaller than k plus 1, it is actually smaller than 3. It is actually smaller than 3. In fact, 3 is greater than 1 plus 1 by k to the power k. And of course, k plus 1 is greater than 3 because, well, greater than or equal to 3 because as you make k larger, k plus 1 will be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. So, this quantity is smaller than a fixed number that is 3. Why? Therein lies the challenge question. Here is the challenge question. Herein is a, here is a challenge. Show that 3 is greater than 1 plus 1 by k raised to the power k for k greater than or equal to 2. So, this is not very hard to show. Please do not look up online. These days there are a lot of videos, a lot of resources out there. 
there is AI and so on. But I want really want you to do this. It's a lot of fun. You can take some time to do it actually. And give your original answer in the comment section. Try to be creative about this. So 3 is greater than 1 plus 1 by k raised to the power k. How can you show this? Think about that. But I will tell you the relationship of this with the Euler number. We actually discuss this a lot in our Math Olympiad program, in the ISI CMI entrance program and so on. Turns out that 1 plus 1 by k raised to the power k, this sequence of numbers. So when you plug in k equal to 1, you will get this. When you plug in k equal to 2, you will get this. k equal to 3, you will get this. So these are the numbers in the sequence. And turns out that this infinite sequence is increasing. It's monotonically increasing. It's increasing for larger values of k. The value of the quantity is larger. And bounded above. Bounded above means it's smaller than some constant number. It's smaller than some constant number. So, increasing, you have to show this using AMGM inequality. There is a beautiful book on inequalities by Korovkin, which has a very nice treatment of this particular part. It's increasing and it's bounded above means it's smaller than some constant number in case in this case you can show it's smaller than 3 actually and then if you know a little bit of calculus you will know that such sequences which are increasing and bounded above they have a limit they converge to some number and turns out that particular number is E, the Euler number. And this is also related with compound interest. So when you are teaching this to really young kids, you can start with the compound interest problems and then discover the Euler number, which is fantastic. If you are working with older kids, then you can talk about AMGM inequality and then talk about the Euler number. If you are, if you are working with still older kids, let's say in high school or college, then you can actually talk about limits, convergence, and then talk about Euler number. So there are a bunch of ways of doing the same thing. It's awesome, right? All right. So think about this and I will see you in the next one. Try to give an answer to the challenge question in the comment section. And if you are interested in outstanding prog programs in mathematical sciences, research projects, internships, or mentoring for the best universities in the world, check Chinta. I think we can be a great community for you. All right. Take care. Bye.